My name is Zhang Xin. I'm affiliated with the School of Advanced International and Area Studies based at East China Normal University in Shanghai. I'm an assistant professor there. Uh, I'm very glad to have this opportunity to uh, talk about, briefly talk about uh, China's changing role in the future security landscape in the NISA region uh, in 2020. Um, briefly speaking, I think uh, we all agree with one basic fact. Uh, China's uh, overall diplomatic and foreign policy um, agenda has been expanding uh, really rapidly in the past few years. Uh, China seemed to be learning very rapidly how to behave like a true global power. And, and I think that's partly because of the uh, new leadership we have in China, in Beijing, uh, his own political ambition and leadership style. Partly uh, uh, that transformation comes from a, a set of uh, uh, structural factors. Uh, for example, domestic economic models that we are used to uh, since the beginning of the 1980s seem to exhaust itself. So one very logical solution is to be more uh, actively engaged in overseas international uh, activities, expanding the uh, international market, uh, send more labor uh, to the overseas labor market, and also engage more bilateral, trilateral economic activities with uh, countries that are geographically more distant from China. So this is whole part of the uh, uh, rising China thesis. Uh, more specifically, in the, the NISA region, I think traditionally China has been very cautious uh, to be directly involved uh, in either the economic sphere or, or the political sphere, because that region was regarded as geographically somewhat distant from China, especially the, the Middle East and North Africa. Uh, Central Asia is slightly different, it's geographic, geographically um, uh, close, but uh, for a long time has been sort of detached from the, the core geographic uh, boundaries of China. But things have been changing very rapidly. Uh, as I briefly mentioned, uh, China's economic interest has been uh, expanding really fast. And um, uh, particularly in the recent uh, state-sanctioned uh, economic statecraft, uh, the, the one of the top priority set by the current uh, Chinese government and the Chinese leadership is the so-called uh, Belt and Road Initiative. And all the major regions in the NISA uh, region, um, Central Asia, Middle East, North Africa, play a pivotal role in um, uh, implementing this uh, grandiose economic uh, initiative. So in that sense, <coughs> I think time is ripe for China to seriously think about its position in this region and whether some of the older day um, principles, uh, working approach need to be at least partially modified. And we do see some recent evidence uh, that such kind of um, uh, self-examination as well as uh, policy changes uh, is taking place. Right? Uh, for example, uh, uh, late last year, uh, China for the uh, first time uh, showed a very active uh, attitude in uh, helping uh, facilitate the peace negotiation in Syria. And also um, similar attempts, uh, we've seen similar attempts in the case of Afgan Afghanistan and also the uh, Israeli-Palestine uh, uh, conflict. Right? These, some of these um, actions or uh, official narratives are somewhat new. Um, so I do agree with some of the uh, pundits in this regard that we might be witnessing the beginning of a new era of Chinese diplomacy, particularly in this, this area. Having said that, um, I think the, the most likely scenario for the next 15 to 20 years in China's approach to this area, region will um, um, uh, show several major features. One is primarily the engagement will still focus on economic side. Uh, political engagement will be still quite limited, and I think the Chinese state uh, realized how complicated and how difficult um, uh, to engage this, this area in a political or military security uh, terms. So I think the overall tone in the political or security uh, dimension will be still very, very cautious. Um, but th there will be some new approaches um, uh, on top of what we have uh, already seen. So far, we've seen some uh, typical diplomatic uh, approach and maneuver. For example, sending a, a special envoy to uh, concerned countries and try to facilitate bilateral or sometimes regional level uh, peace negotiation. That had been one uh, approach. And also, we've seen uh, several, in several cases, China seemed to indicate strong interest to provide uh, site within China uh, for uh, peaceful uh, negotiation by uh, related parties in the, in the NISA region. 
Um, and also, of course, there are uh, uh, multiple cases of, of direct provision of uh, fundings, both uh, monetary and non-monetary aid to related parties. I think these approaches will be maintained, but um, in the next 15 to 20 years, we probably will see more active experiments with some new approaches. For example, um, uh, uh, Chinese think tanks as well as uh, Chinese government agencies related to this area are, I think, act actively studying and learning uh, uh, as to how to provide concrete, implementable uh, political agenda, political programs for those parties involved in some of the most um, uh, disastrous political crises. Uh, this is something China hasn't been able to uh, do uh, un until very recently. Uh, we provide some um, uh, very general principle um, to the, the parties involved in these peace negotiations. But um, uh, we're far from a um, very successful or very mature uh, player in this uh, process to provide the concerned parties a very concrete, specific, uh, and a politically implementable programs uh, for the concerned party to, to, to ex examine and maybe to choose uh, from a set of other options as a possible uh, solution for um, uh, political crisis. So this is something I think China is learning uh, among many other new approaches. Um, and also, overall, uh, overall speaking, I think China's direct involvement in military or security um, sphere in this region will be highly limited. But this, uh, uh, having said that, it uh, wouldn't be totally impossible to imagine China will increase its uh, military or security presence in this region, one way or another. Um, uh, I think it's very likely China will establish uh, some new or additional uh, logistics uh, support centers uh, in various spots in, in this, this region. Uh, not a full-scale, uh, fully operational uh, military base, but uh, mostly uh, as a, a logistic or support center, uh, as we see already uh, uh, saw in the case of Djibouti in, in Africa. Uh, similar cases will be uh, part of the reality, I think, n not in the not too distant future in this NISA area, uh, very likely on multiple, multiple fronts. That's another um, uh, possible develop development in the near future. Um, and also, uh, we, uh, we uh, expect to see more sort of the, the try and uh, error approach in terms of how to more effectively engage uh, this, this region. Um, the approach we see in the, the Syrian case was one of the, uh, the early examples. Um, uh, it serves as a trial balloon for the Chinese diplomatic circles as well as the Chinese uh, uh, government agencies to learn how to expand its diplomatic uh, uh, influence in a more effective way. So this is one, one uh, a case, and uh, I think I'm comfortable to say we would expect to see more cases like that. Um, so generally speaking, um, China's engagement in this area, with this area, will be expanding, uh, will be expanding, probably expanding at a, a speed we haven't seen uh, in the past few uh, decades. Uh, but primarily, the engagement will be expressed in the economic, uh, in the economic sphere. But in the, in the political and the security uh, spheres, we'll see more uh, efforts to play as a mediator uh, in a set of uh, highly controversial uh, regional political crisis or, or, or um, uh, political negotiation uh, settings. Um, and China will probably use more and more um, the, this try and error approach to test its ability and its um, political wisdom to play an effective uh, mediator role in this region. And, and uh, on top of that, we will see a limited but uh, visible uh, uh, expansion of its military security presence uh, in this area, not directly uh, uh, military um, uh, boots on the, on the ground, but uh, other more limited forms of, uh, of military or uh, security presence is expected to expand in this area. So that's uh, um, several major points I want to make about today's topic. Thank you for your attention.